And you know, if you're two consenting adults, and which of us isn't? <laughs> it's nobody's business who you love, right? Right. right? Nobody's business who you love, where you love, what equipment you might use. It's, <laughs> it's interesting, but it's nobody's business. <laughs> Actually, the, the equipment is somebody's business. <laughs> and yet the traditional values people are all upset over homosexuality in the workplace, in the movies, in the Boy Scouts. And they should just realize that homosexuality in the Boy Scouts is a tradition. <laughs> Get behind it. time we think about same-sex marriage it makes us sick to our guts I mean to people who want to commit to a stable monogamous lifelong relationship what are they nuts <laughs> it's unnatural now a man should not lie with a person who is a guy he should only lie to his wife the Bible is clear we're defenders of marriage Three button suits will raise our double standard and see who salutes. Defenders of marriage, defending the institution against people who want to get married. Yeah, gay was a, a, a dirty word when I was at school. Uh, the greatest insult was to be labelled gay. It is a massive, massive problem. At that point, we, we young people are trying to find their place in the world. They're under huge pressure from other sort of societal impacts. They've got um, school demands, family demands. Most young people are working as well, trying to, to get money just to live. In fact, it was even worse than being called a, a, a rapist or a pedophile or even a zoophile. In fact, most of these things were seen as, you know, part and parcel to being a homosexual. You know, homosexuality was seen and indeed presented as a perversion which led to other perversions and therefore was to be avoided. To suffer from that kind of deeply personal bullying at the same time massively undermines the ability just to get on with growing and, and having a good life. You know, I, I come from Ashburton, it's a small town, conservative, sort of rural, ruralist kind of place. And there were, you know, three other people uh, that I know of, gay people, and within months of them coming out, they had all killed themselves. They were, we were told, um, harassed and bullied to the point that they committed suicide. It just, that's the kind of um, information that just isn't out there. Um, and if you go and ask any high school, you know, they'll just say like, no, nope, no gay people here and no gay related suicide or anything. Um, so it's just, it's really um, untalked about. I think it's hidden because there is still some shame and being described as gay, whether, whether under any circumstance it still feels often for people like a shameful thing until um, they've worked through it and you can't expect a 14 or 15 year old to work through that without support. People who say that's so gay when they mean stupid or call someone that they don't like a homo or a faggot, you know, it, it's really insulting. When I've talked to young people I know in high school they still use gay as a derogatory term. I think for people that are questioning and they are kind of hypersensitive um, to kind of language and negative connotations. Um, I think it um, does um, kind of impact on them. It's offensive. Um, the reason why they're using the word gay is because it carries a negative connotation. What you're really saying is you are an homosexual person and therefore you are bad. They're reinforcing the negative connotations of that word, which they shouldn't. Um, in schools, it's particularly bad. There is still not enough information or education with kids about language and how language impacts on people and, you know, um, this kind of teasing and bullying kind of stuff that goes on a lot as well. If those, ter if those insults go unchallenged as well by other people, just kind of people that hear it just think that it's OK to insult people. And we talk about why you shouldn't do that and all of those sorts of things, but it is still part of the kind of culture of learning how to um, talk with each other and engage socially at that kind of high school level. And I think there's real issues with it and um, there should be more resources in schools to try to get kids to shift from that. There's no point um, punishing them for it, but 
getting them to understand what it really, what the impacts really are. Most of the reported homophobia that there seems to be comes from religious sources. I mean, this is a, one of the basic questions that I think the church is grappling with today. The Bible has never been a whole list of rules to be followed. People have taken some of the things out of the Bible as rules to follow, but the Bible is actually a compilation of a huge number of different kinds of writings. There's rules, regulations for how to live within a community at a certain time. There's history, there's myth, there's story, there's letters, there's visions, there's all sorts of stuff. If you actually say, well, the Bible's got a whole lot of rules in it that we've got to follow, you will actually come up with those sort of statements. You know, I mean, it's there. And so if you believe that the Bible is the rule book to follow, then I guess that's where you go. But, but the Bible is actually an account of a whole lot of different faith communities trying to understand their journey of faith and describing their relationship with God and how they see themselves as being faithful people. And when you do that, you don't have problems with contradictions. You don't have problems with, you know, that there's something that says something here that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, because actually it's about putting our story alongside the story of other faithful people and listening for where God is leading us today. So that's a, a very different way of approaching the Bible. And, um, and it's interesting that there is nothing that Jesus says at all that could even be partially construed as um, excluding anyone who wants to follow. You know, and this is one of the issues that sort of drove me away from religion. It, it wasn't the major factor and certainly wasn't even one of the main things at all, but it certainly helped push me away from, from religion. I quite understand why um, gay and lesbian people would leave the church uh, particularly when churches have made such statements as have been made in the past and are continuing to be made. Um, I, and that deeply saddens me. I'm pleased that that hasn't been the case for all because I believe that if you if you move away from the institution, and I can understand why you would, but if you move away, you can't actually change it then. And, and I'm one of those people that believe that change happens from within. Um, I mean, I know external forces also affect, but it's so easy for an institution to become more and more inward looking and to exclude people from itself and be less and less um, aware of itself as being an institution within a community. And I think that's very dangerous.